I'm the guy from Vogue, you know, from the Bio 111 Lab Section 8, and I'm here on my way to go meet three velvet worms to talk about the Onycophora phylum. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. So can you guys tell me a little bit about your taxa? What about our taxa? Well, what are some defining characteristics you'd use to describe yourself? Well, I know I'm bilaterally symmetrical. We also qualify as vermiforms since our bodies are so long. I want to know a little bit more. Well, I know we're terrestrial. Not to mention we have sac-like excretory systems. We also have more than two cell layers, organs, and tissues. Anything else? Our body cavity is located between the intestinal organ and the body wall. Well, speaking of intestines, can you tell me a little bit about your own? We have a straight gut that ends at the anus. I see that you all have a different number of legs. How many do each of you have? 14 pairs. 25. I have 33. And what's the most legs you've ever seen any other velvet worm have? I've seen 43 pairs before. Question number four. What parts are included in your nervous system? We clearly have a brain and central nerve cords. Duh. Well, how about your circulatory system? It's open. And we have a heart. Oh, oh, tell her about our respiratory system. Oh, it's a simple one in the form of a trachea and spiracles. Now, I want to know a little bit more about the diversity within your taxa. Well, there are about 70 species within our taxa. For example, we are sometimes commonly known as either the velvet worms or the walking worms. For the most part, our species is colorful, but there is one worm that's just white. We're all considered omnicophoras, and according to Berkeley, omnicophoras have been living on this planet ever since what's called the Cambrian period. But at that time, they were found in marine form, such as the members of the genus Ayeshia, whose fossils are found in rocks around 540 million years old. Modern anacophrias, though they are terrestrials, are still poor in maintaining their body's water balance and are only found in damp, moist habitats. So next, tell me a little bit more about your habitat. How do you make your living? We mostly live in South America, Africa, and the Caribbean. We used to live like marine animals, which is why scientists believe that we were formed in water. But now, we live on land. Now, let's talk about sex. My favorite subject. So sexually reproducing animals, just like humans. But we're not completely like humans. We're quite biologically and genetically diverse. Some of us are fully live-bearing animals with well-developed placenta-like structure. Those attached to our mama's uterine wall and nourishes that growing embryo until the birth of sequences of self-sufficient mini velvet worms appear. My type of reproduction is more calm in fashion with the delivery of sperm by direct contact between male and female genitalia. So how many babies do you make a year? Well, some of us are just crazy and make six to 23 offsprings a year. Others produce between one and eight normally. The worm gestates for up to 17 months, but the average is about a year, which is a year way too long. For well, that does sound like a lot of work, which brings me to my favorite topic. Let's talk about food. Well, we are predatory animals, so we love to feed on insects and bullets. I just like to point out that we are voracious predator. On either side of our head, we have a modified leg called an oral papillae. They're like jet lag and they release this vicious slime that catches our target with a sticky blast, which immobilizes them. We're obviously carnivorous creatures. And you know, as they say, slow and sticky wins the race. So let's talk about locomotion. Tell me about your moves. Well, even though we're known as worms, we actually aren't. We are long-bodied invertebrates that may look like worms, but we sure do have 14 or 43 legs. A fun fact about us is that we don't actually have an exoskeleton like a worm or a caterpillar. And we're named velvet because our sensory hairs that cover the epidermis give us a really velvety appearance. Would you consider yourself more of a protosome, deuterosomes, or neither? We're protosomes because our mouths are the main sources of getting and receiving nutrients surrounding us. Let's talk more personal. What's your relationship to humans? Personally, I just feel used by them. Agree. They just admire our anatomy for research and use us for our bodies. Do you think they even know that we were the first animals to walk on Earth? We have ventrally directed limbs that are considered the ancestral limb for which the walking branch or endopod evolved from, which makes us the first walking species on Earth. Lastly, tell me about how you guys originated. About 540 million years ago, we came out of marine life, according to those scientists. This phylogenetic tree is from our literature cited from systematic biology. Although it shows here that we are most closely related with arthropoda, 
we are not as closely related in other experiments which will be shown later. This is most likely different because this tree has extensive research and experimentation behind it. This is 16S RNA phylogenetic tree generated by the Bio 111 Section 8 experimentation. Here, we are most closely related to our sister taxa, the Mollusca, and our cousin taxa, the Chordata. One who seems least important to us in the outgroup is the Periphera, according to the species investigated. Also note that the Anthropoda is not closely related to us like in the literature. Here you can see the character data matrix tree. As you can tell, Anikophora's sister taxa is now Annelida, whereas before Annelida was much further to the outgroup of Periphera. The Periphera in both cases stays the same, and it's also important to note that Mollusca moves much further away from Anikophora, making their relationship much further from one another.